This is National Native News. I'm Antonia Gonzalez. Some Native leaders in British Columbia are calling for the shutdown of construction of a controversial pipeline. As Dan Karpinchuk reports, they say Indigenous communities near the site could be at risk from the coronavirus. First Nations leaders who support the Wet'suwet'en hereditary chiefs in opposing the pipeline want the federal and British Columbia governments to stop construction. In a letter, the Union of British Columbia Indian Chiefs say continued construction increases the risk of transmission of COVID-19 to both Indigenous and non-Indigenous communities from out-of-town construction workers. B.C. has said construction projects are an essential service. But the union says the construction camps should not remain open during a pandemic. There are also concerns across Canada about overwhelming rural and northern hospitals and health care facilities with unnecessary visitors. In the north, we have really limited uh, medical services as it is. So if anything were to happen, it would just overwhelm the limited services that we already have. Meanwhile, Coastal GasLink, which is building the pipeline, says local residents and contractors are being hired and no new workers will be moving in to company accommodations. The company says it's reduced the number of workers on site because of the risk of the coronavirus and those that are there are following physical distancing measures. Native leaders say that's not good enough. For National Native News, I'm Dan Karpinchuk. The Oglala Sioux Tribal Council held an emergency meeting Wednesday to discuss the tribe's current lockdown and the one confirmed case of COVID-19 on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. The council voted to banish the individual who tested positive for COVID-19 and is now in Rapid City. The council and president believe the person who's not Oglala Lakota and works for a school was negligent in traveling out of state and then returning to the reservation despite COVID-19 measures. President Julian Bearrunner, in a radio address to residents Wednesday night, talked about the vote, saying it was a hard decision for leaders. We can't continue to take this lightly. The people, our members, the people that elected us to come into office, you know, put us in those positions to protect their health and their general welfare. And for me, it seemed, you know, that, you know, it was a little, it was, it was negligent. You know, that this individual would still leave after laws were already in place, not only tribally, but nationally and globally, that we knew that this was happening. Bear Runner says information about the positive case is still being verified, and tribal leaders are praying for the individual and their family during this difficult time. The tribe has several emergency orders in place to address COVID-19, including a travel ban and shelter in place. The reservation is on lockdown until Friday as the tribe considers expanding it. Traditional leaders of the First Mesa Consolidated Villages on the Hopi Reservation in Arizona are restricting visitors and encouraging residents to stay home. As of Wednesday, there were a dozen positive cases of COVID-19 confirmed by the Hopi Health Care Center, which is located on First Mesa jurisdiction. Ivan Sidney is the village administrator at First Mesa. He says they're urging people to take COVID-19 measures seriously. This is one time our leaders say to not express our differences. We come together as Native people, embrace one another, and look to our past as survivors to move forward and take great heat in how we can protect ourselves. A Hopi member has also tested positive on the neighboring Navajo reservation. Hopi Chairman Timothy Nuvanyama in a video message Wednesday encouraged Hopi citizens to listen to local leaders and abide by restrictions. I'm Antonia Gonzalez. National Native News is produced by Kiwanak Broadcast Corporation with funding by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Support by the Sanoski Chambers Law Firm, championing tribal sovereignty and defending Native American rights since 1976 with offices in Washington, D.C., New Mexico, California, and Alaska. Support by BNSF Railway, moving our economy for over 165 years. Our vision is to operate injury and accident-free with safety programs, training, and technology. More at bnsf.com slash tribal relations. Native Voice One, the Native American Radio Network.